Hey guys, what's happening? I'm the Tomeister and welcome back to Tim Buckton in episode 70 of the series. In this episode, guys, we will be building an area called Spring Harbor. And basically everything that I'm highlighting in this zone is going to be part of the Spring Harbor neighborhood. Um, a little bit more than that, actually. I'm going to expand, you know, a little bit farther out of the city. And I'm going to start to surround our Disney area with some suburbs. So it's going to be a pretty packed episode. It's going to be a pretty long episode, too. Um, you know, this is a giant area that I am filling in. Um, but yeah, as you're seeing right now, guys, we're going to do this a little bit on uh, a little bit different than we normally do. Um, I'm going to develop this area by zoning part of it anyways. I'm, I'm kind of conducting this as an experiment to see if zoning is a viable option for the outskirts of town. Just because I don't want to focus a ton of time on each neighborhood surrounding the city. You know, they're not necessarily boring, but they're, they're less areas that I want to focus on. You know, I don't really care if a particular type of house spawns in, in a particular location. Like as long as the overall neighborhood looks good, that's all that matters. And to do that, I'm using the theme manager mod. Um, actually, no, it's not even a mod. I think it's part of the game now. I mean, it's been so long. Um, but I am using a, a specific theme, and that is the big suburbs uh, theme, I guess. I'll put a link down in the description for it if you guys want to check it out. I've used a bunch of their houses before and I've actually talked about them two episodes ago. Episode 68, I believe. So I'm going to be using those same houses. They're just regular suburban houses. Um, and, and yeah, I'm basically just going to try out and see if zoning is a good option to fill in these massive neighborhood areas. Because you know, plopping is okay, but it's very time consuming and it's it's kind of like the boring part of developing a city is just, you know, plopping down massive neighborhoods full of houses. So maybe zoning can save us a little bit of time. Um, yeah, I, I don't really want to spoil right now how it all went down. I'll let you guys discover that uh, on your own in this episode. Uh, so that's why I'm not going to like zone this entire neighborhood. Just... I guess the core of it. And another reason too why I chose to do that, to, to go with zoning, is there was a pre-built theme that I could use. So with the theme manager, you can actually go through your entire residential or commercial, like you can go through the entire list of stuff that you want to come up. You can go through like the entire list of residential buildings or commercial or whatever the case may be and you can pre-select which buildings specifically can appear in that theme. You guys probably already knew that. Uh, but yeah, I, because there was a pre-defined theme, like that big suburb theme that I could choose, uh, it just made it super easy. You know, I didn't have to go through like a thousand buildings and choose which ones I wanted to appear and which ones uh, to prevent from appearing. And another thing too about the Spring Harbor neighborhood, it's it's kind of like a conglomeration of both modern buildings and really old houses and stuff. Uh, just because like, like take this main avenue that's going through town here that was probably laid down you know mid 20th century to provide another connection from downtown but then you can notice that there's all like these little windy streets that follow the coastline so those were probably there for about a hundred years before then uh, so that's why you're gonna have a mixture of like old Victorian housing right next to like a brand new development of modern eclectic homes uh, yeah, so, anyway, just a, a, an interesting point about this neighborhood. And I actually really like the way that the land is shaped in this area. It's kind of like in a, in a hidden cove right next to the river. It's really nice. It, if I was in Timbuktu, I wouldn't mind living in this part of town. But if you would like to live in this part of town, become a patron, guys. Uh, by becoming a patron, you uh, 
I basically build you a house in Timbuktun and you get a job location featured in one of the Timbuktun episodes. All right, and basically here we go. I unpause the game, full speed ahead, and I'm basically just watching the whole neighborhood grow at this point. Now, there's one thing that I didn't really account for in the beginning of this uh, is leveling up. And yeah, you just saw a bunch of happy faces appear there. I'm sure that uh, somebody just won a game at the University of Timbuktun. But uh, anyway, yeah, so what happens is like, of course you guys know when you zone houses down, they're not automatically going to build up into a level 5 home. Um, so they're going to start at level 1 and as, you know, as you provide more and more services to that area, such as like more schools and parks and whatever, land value goes up. And then your buildings will start to level up to more, I guess, like prestigious looking homes. Um, so it's kind of funny because in the beginning of making this neighborhood, uh, it's all like a bunch of like trailers and little tiny, like little tiny houses that are appearing. And uh, yeah, I ended up plopping uh, like a big part of this neighborhood in the end. So it's kind of funny having like a little trailer park looking neighborhood surrounded by super rich houses. Uh, you guys will witness that a little later in the episode. But in the meantime, uh, you guys get to watch me struggle for a couple minutes here with this road pack that I downloaded. This again is the Big Suburbs road pack. Um, it comes with like a whole bunch of roads, streets, uh, like these big avenues here with turning lanes. Uh, all sorts of really interesting stuff. They are a little difficult to get used to, but it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, I mean, it just adds a ton of realism to any North American city that you guys may be building. I highly recommend it. I can put down, I'll, I'll put down in the description, guys, the link to all of the big suburb uh, pack because there's like a ton of stuff. Also, the creator of that mod of all like the big suburb neighborhoods and whatnot is also the creator of the big parking lots mod, which I used uh, for the Timbuktun Mall a little while ago. So that's actually a really important and, and really useful pack of assets that you guys should probably download if you're building an American city. And yeah, so this neighborhood here specifically, like I said, you know, it, it's kind of part of like that windy roads going through um, this, this neighborhood here following the coastline. So I figured I would plop this down just because I wanted a specific set of buildings, you know, like older Victorian style houses, like I mentioned before. Uh, so that's why I chose to plop down some houses here. And I'm, and I'm gonna do the same thing for this little chunk of land here right beside it. You know, I thought it was a suitable place for some nice cottages and stuff. Um, one thing that kind of bothers me all the time about Timbuktu, and I don't think I've ever talked about this, when I was making the map, so as you guys know, I used a custom map for this. I used um, like a, a height map of, I, I forget the name of a town in Europe somewhere, in Denmark, I believe. Um, so I used like the, the most accurate height map that I could to generate this map and for the most part it, it generated like really good results. You know the terrain is super rich and nicely textured but the issue is I don't think that height map accounted for underwater. I'm not even sure if like any height map can do that. So what happens is like so you'll have land and then I'm sure once like the height map is, is at water level it just drops down to the lowest that uh, the terrain can go in the game so you have like these super jagged cliffs everywhere along the map like wherever there's water directly beside that water is like a giant steep drop right down to the lowest level of, of the terrain and that's kind of bothered me all over town like I could have fixed this when I was generating the map and making it up and all that but I didn't um, so it makes the terrain a little bit more difficult and, and you know, it's more jagged than it normally would be. And a little less realistic too, because you don't get that, that underwater texture when you're zoomed out really far from the town. Uh, but not a big deal. I'm not too fussy about that. You know, the water is, is quite, uh, it's not very transparent in City Skyline, so you don't really see deep into the water anyways. So not a big deal. 
So yeah, briefly, um, I'm laying down a new neighborhood over here. So I'm, I'm laying down the street. As you can see, it's like this nice newer neighborhood that's right beside the Disney park. And I figured I would lay this down for, you know, some more of the richer citizens that either want to be close to the park or as you can see, it's like super close to the mall. You know, this is like the, the more luxurious part of town. There, so you guys just got a brief glimpse of this entire neighborhood, and as you can see, it's pretty large. And it's actually probably the largest neighborhood that I've undertaken in one episode. Um, of course, I, I cut out a few parts here and there in this episode just to make it a normal length, but uh, nonetheless, it was, it was a really big project. Um, and it turns out, I'll, I'll kind of spoil this for you guys, it was not a good alternative to zone an area uh, versus plopping it down. And I'll tell you why. I guess over time it would be, uh, but in the short run, you're better off just taking the time to plop down houses. The reason is, see right now we're hovering just around 85,000 people in Timbuktun. So it's not a lot by any means for any normal size city, but for city skylines, that's a lot of people. You know, it's Timbuktun is in like a big city stage. Once you reach close to 100,000 people, there's some weird things that start to happen in the game. So with like cars and people, it, it like cars will start disappearing and, and essential vehicles are gonna have more trouble reaching their destination because you were constantly reaching the car limit. Weird things like that start happening. Uh, but one of the main things is the simulation speed starts slowing down dramatically. Uh, I'm not sure why that is. Maybe it's just like a limitation of my CPU. It's not able to handle all the calculations that are constantly going on. So the game kind of throttles back. I don't know if it's like a game mechanic or if it's like an actual limitation, uh, like hardware wise. I don't know, but like right now, my simulation speed is running so slow. When, when I, when, even like at max speed, it really doesn't change the speed of the game that much at all. Like it's, I might as well just play the game at normal speed all the time. Um, so what happens is, of course, you know, at normal speed, you guys know that your city is not going to develop very fast at all. Houses are going to take forever to be built. They're going to take even longer to upgrade to and higher levels. Um, and the houses that I kind of want to have in the neighborhood that I zoned are like level three, four, and five homes. So of course it's gonna take forever for them to get there. I think in this episode, a lot of the houses are like starting to get to level three, I think. Um, but I mean, this episode probably took me like four hours in game time to finish. You know, this entire neighborhood was about four hours of work and I started with the zoning. Remember, that's like the first thing that I did in this episode was zone. So if it takes four hours for a house to reach level three or two, you can see you may as well just take the 45 minutes or one hour of work and plop the exact houses that you want. You know, that that's the challenge that I'm facing here in Timbuktun. And it, it makes zoning pretty much impossible at this point. You know, no matter what I zone, it's just gonna take forever to build, uh, whether it be commercial or whatever the case is. But at least you can see it killed my residential demand. You know, and whatever is left of it, you can see like there's a little green blip there. Um, a house is probably gonna get built somewhere and that little blip's gonna disappear. And you know, it's, it's a good way to control your residential demand because it was skyrocketed for quite a while. So anyways, I figured, you know what, never mind about the zoning, it's not a good alternative. I'm just gonna plop the rest of this neighborhood, let's go. And I'm glad I did because these apartment buildings, I think they're about a month old. I, they're pretty recent on the workshop. Uh, I forget who made them or whatever. I can put a link down in, in the description for those two uh, once I find them on the workshop. But they're really great residential buildings. They're more modern, so they fit perfect in this location. And it's, it's nice to see that style of building in the game. A lot of creators will go for like the more, either like wall to wall buildings or older type apartment buildings. These are like nice modern condos. And what makes it even better is that there's two variations of the building, there's two heights. So I put a short one and a tall one right beside each other and you can see them from across the city. Uh, you know, they just fit really well into this location. 
And by the way, it doesn't matter if you have one mod or a hundred mods with thousands of assets or none, your simulation speed is going to slow down eventually. It's it's just it's just how it is, I guess. So maybe the maybe it won't be a problem anymore when I get my new CPU. Um, so I, I just bought a 5900X by AMD. I'm still waiting for it. Uh, it's been like a month now. Uh, I don't know when I'm gonna get it. It hasn't been shipped out, but anyway, it's ordered. Hopefully I get it before Christmas, uh, but if not, no big deal. I mean, this, my current computer runs fine, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, maybe, you know, with the new CPU, the simulation speed is, is gonna be like so fast that zoning is gonna become the only alternative. You know, maybe it's, I don't know, we'll see. Oh yeah, and this was an idea that I had. So near my city, so where I live, my city went under like a, a big growth spur at some point. So like these huge neighborhoods were being built and they're all interconnected with trails. Just, just because of the style that these neighborhoods were built, like there was a lot of trees and, and green space left between the neighborhoods that the city just went and placed down a lot of trails all over the place. So it's kind of nice. You know, you want to walk to your buddy's house. You can most likely walk in a trail and end up pretty close to his house rather than having to walk like on the sidewalk everywhere. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I kind of followed that same trend in this part of town with it being super rocky and stuff too. I find it gave the terrain a purpose rather than just being trees and, you know, cause I couldn't build any houses on these hills. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm hoping that it's gonna promote walking in the area too. Like maybe some people will, will work for the schools and stuff just down the street. And, uh, you know, rather than taking their car, they can just walk down the trail and go to work.
Okay, so the first part of Spring Harbor is complete. Now we're going to move on over to, I guess, the rich part of town. Um, I, I mean, I guess it's the rich part, but the houses are not going to be too extreme, you know. They're just a little bit more upscale than what you would find elsewhere in town. Um, but it, it's like, it's not North Hollywood Hills uh, by any means. <laughs> Anyways. But, yeah, a lot of, like, repetitive housing, a lot of... You know, housing developments. Nothing too extreme here either. But what I'm really excited about is, I'm not gonna lie, the main reason why I'm building this neighborhood is not to focus on the actual neighborhood itself. It's more to do with the neighborhood being close to the highway. You can see that this neighborhood's kind of surrounded by highways. And it's gonna make for an awesome road video into Timbuktun. I got, I'm not gonna lie, guys. like. My goal for any road video into Timbuktun is going to be kind of portraying a realistic transition from being in the middle of nowhere outside of town, you know, so you're going to go from seeing trees and you're going to start to see a little bit more development. So, you know, we built that little truck stop a while ago, so we're going to pass by that. And then as we're making our way into the city, you're going to start seeing some newer housing developments, maybe some construction lots and things. And then it's the like the the urbanization is gonna get more and more dense until we're like boom right in the middle of Timbuktun and all of its glory. Uh, so yeah, it's gonna be great. Um, and yeah, this neighborhood is more for like I, I guess a showpiece. Uh, but I mean, nonetheless, I mean I, I I still put a little bit of effort into it. Um, you know, when you zoom out, it looks like it's part of the city and it looks like it's it's kind of naturally there. You know. It, I still wanted it to be good looking overall. I just didn't want to place down a random neighborhood that didn't make any sense. You guys know I would never do that. Um, but I mean, yeah, as you can see, like this entire neighborhood is nothing but eclectic homes and, and modern houses, modern condo buildings. And with it being super close to the Disney park, of course, like this is the type of neighborhood that you would retire in, hence the retirement home that's here. And of course, it serves a functional purpose too. You know, eventually all the the citizens in this part of town are going to get old and they'll all move into this local retirement home. Now moving back to let's say let's call this lower spring harbor you know just because it's like on the bottom of, of a plateau kind of thing um, yeah so there were no commercial buildings that were springing up at all and I only realized why that was after you know finishing this entire thing um, I don't think I included any commercial buildings uh, when using the theme manager to create this neighborhood so of course like it was just preventing any commercial buildings to spring up at all uh, but that's not a big problem because I just decided to you know unzone all of the commercial areas that were here and just manually plop everything down I think it looks just as good and if not better because there was a ton of restaurants and stuff that I never placed around town that I got to try out here like this KFC um, but yeah this is kind of like a run-of-the-mill nothing fancy kind of neighborhood there's no malls or anything close to here 
the closest one is of course the North Timbuktin Mall, uh, of course just north of here. You know, so you're, this is like the type of neighborhood where all like your locally owned garages are and all like the little restaurants and things and maybe like your occasional Best Western. Those types of neighborhoods, your town probably has one. Uh, but yeah, still you can see here like some of the houses are starting to upgrade to level two, maybe three, like they're, they're, they're looking a little bit more nicer, I guess. Uh, but uh, along the main road, for whatever reason, uh, a lot of them are still like in trailer park mode. And yeah, it, it's going to take some time for this neighborhood to fully develop into its final stages. And lastly, I decided to plop down a grocery store over here. And then right across the road, an old, almost abandoned store. You know, you gotta get your mixture of like really nice, well taken care of businesses, but there's also some businesses that are struggling, right? So we can't, uh, we can't not portray that. Like Timbuktu is not a perfect city by any means. It's still got some grime to it. So yeah, that is pretty much going to be it for this episode, guys. Behold Spring Harbor in all of its glory. Isn't that amazing? Um, but you're going to get a better glimpse of it in just a minute here because there are some awesome cinematics. And also stay tuned, guys. We've got a couple new patrons that have just subscribed. Uh, so we're going to go over their houses in Timbuktu as well as their job locations. So yeah, stay tuned until that, guys. That's coming right up in just a second here. But anyways, I hope you really enjoyed this episode. Next episode of Timbuktu, I'm not sure what we're going to get into. Probably some more suburbs. You know, that's mostly what is left to do in Timbuktu at this point. Um, and by that, I'm talking about like the city itself. So in like really north Timbuktu between Aberdeen and Timbuktu, there's a huge chunk of land that we haven't touched yet. I don't know why, but I'm forgetting the name of that county. Um, but yeah, there's like a whole county chunk of land that we haven't developed. And I have some huge plans for there. That's probably going to be the last part of this series. But don't worry, guys. There's still like a ton of episodes lined up. Timbuktu is not ending just yet. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what we're going to do. I'm probably going to focus on the northern part of town, perhaps. You know, just to even it out. Work a little bit on the western point and then south and north, you know, just so the city kind of sprawls out naturally. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'll see. But we will be working on some suburbs, some more suburbs for sure. So yeah, anyway, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, give it a thumbs up and also be sure to subscribe to the channel for many more episodes to come in the near future. And also check out my Patreon page if you'd like to support the channel even further. So now on to the cinematics and then the Patreon features for this episode. Okay guys, today we have two new patrons. First up we have Mooncat1992. 
Now, Mooncat specifically said that they wanted a loft kind of industrial penthouse looking thing. So that is exactly what I provided to Mooncat, a top floor penthouse loft right in downtown Timbuktun. And this will also serve as their job location because Mooncat is a uh, an illustrator or graphic designer, same as in real life. So, you know, I actually really like this spot. It's perfectly centralized, close to everything around town. And not to forget the beautiful view that you get of Timbuktun Harbor. So you get to see the beautiful city of Burton across the bay, you know, the beautiful mountains in the background. Just an overall great location to be. Thanks Mooncat for becoming a patron. All right, next up we have Brad. Now, actually Brad is my coworker in real life. So I gotta say thanks Brad for becoming a patron. And as a tech enthusiast, I knew exactly where your house was going to end up. So I actually purposely started an entire neighborhood just for you, Brad. And I purposely plopped your house as close as I could to this Best Buy right here. Perfect location for you. You know, you can just walk across the street if ever you wanna, you know, itch that shopping need of yours. Um, it's, it's perfect for you. Uh, but actually, I decided why not even go a step further and actually make Brad the district manager for Best Buy for the entire Timbuktun region. How about that? Isn't that awesome? So a nice suburban home. Um, I, unfortunately, I couldn't find a white CRV on the workshop, so you'll just have to make do with a RAV4. Um, you'll probably be all right with that. But uh, no, the, this is your house, Brad. Welcome to Timbuktun. I hope you enjoy your stay. So anyways, guys, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Until the next one, please take care.